Hi, Sheree Hartwick here today, and um, I'm filming this in February. It's like the 4th, it's the 5th, I think. And um, I had planned to do this earlier to get it out well before Valentine's Day, but that didn't work. And um, I happened to show this uh, tile on my daughter's uh, Tangle Time thing that she does every Thursday. She does it uh, 11 o'clock in the morning and 7 o'clock at night, and she has people from all over the world joining her for her classes. And I join her usually in the morning, but sometimes I join the evening one as well. And I happened to show this because I had fun making it, and several of the people really liked it and wanted to know how to do it. We did this technique called 3D or, sh or shadow box, and um, which is what is done on this. And it's, it's very simple. It can be used with any, most any tangle that you do. But it was especially effective on this Valentine, this heart-shaped one. And um, I did it on a, a apprentice tile, which is like four and a half inches. And today I'm going to do it actually on a... Uh, Zendella, which is just a circle tile. And um, the original one I did, which I will also show you when I tilt the camera down, uh, was in a square. And um, it was, it was really, it's just a lot of fun and it's fairly easy to do and you can use it with any tangles you want. I just, I saw a video on uh, YouTube and I will tell you the lady's name. I have to find the card and uh, because I wrote it down. Oh, I think it's on the card I'm actually using. Her, it Look on YouTube if you want to find the original uh, video. It's look, search for 3D gray tile. And her name is Yuko, Y-U-K-O, Takamasu, maybe? T-A-K-A-M-A-S-U. And um, it... it it's, it's really interesting, and I hope I do as good a job as she did. I didn't listen to it. I only looked at it, and uh, somebody else, one of the people that's a regular on Heather's uh, uh, classes, said that she listened to it, and it's all in Japanese. So you don't have to worry about the sound, uh, but you can follow along with the video. And hopefully, I don't know any Japanese, so this will be all in English. And... Um, so I'm going to tilt my camera down, and I am going to show you a few things before we actually get started on doing this uh, to help you get your heart shape. So here we go. Okay, this is, this is what we did, and everybody just, or I did, and everybody wanted to learn how to do it. And I'm going to show you the original one that I did from the video, which is this. And actually, some of it's getting washed out a little bit. Um, oh, there. If I shade some of the light, you can see the border. The border on this is very simple. Uh, the one on my heart that I did is a little bit more elaborate. And I will show you step outs for both of them. So you, could, you can pick either one to do. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. And um, I will somehow try and figure to do the step outs on... Uh, my uh, my website, which is pen-zen.com, uh, so that you can print them out and, and use them, other than me just holding them up to the, to the camera for you to see. So first of all, I actually did a um, heart-shaped outline to follow. And how I did that, which is very simple, I mean, you can draw hand-draw a heart if you want, but I took a piece of paper that was the same size as the tile I was using, folded it in half like that, and then just uh, traced a heart. Um, I hand drew the heart, but you know you might have a heart cookie cutter or something like that that you'd want to use. That would work too. But then once you open it, you have your heart shape. You can also use the cutout piece if you want. Say if you were, and I have some uh, apprentice tiles here, 
So say I wanted to do this one, if I wanted to do it perfectly centered, like I had it on this cutout, um, well, it might not be perfectly because I did it by hand, I, w I could just lay it like that. Um, but you can also, then you have the freedom of laying it this way, you know, off-centering it. You can do the same thing with your cutout that you did. You could, you know, have it in the corner and do other things around it. I saw one today that was really interesting. Um, it was totally different, um, but they had a heart like this in the corner with different tangles around it, and they had uh, they made it look like a box of chocolates, and it was really neat. Maybe next year we'll try that one. So that's how you can get your heart shaped. Well, today, I, like I said, when this original one, this is done on a gray tile, and the, the design around the edge is done with a white jelly roll. Um, this one that I did, this one is on a white tile, and so for the border I use just my regular fine black pen um, and then filled it in. Like I say, they're, they're different. The nice thing about using a gray tile is that you already have um, a shade there that you can go lighter and you can go darker. If you're working on the white, you can't, <clears throat> you can't really go lighter than the white, you can leave the white show, but you can't go lighter. So it, it's just fun to work on the gray. And if you don't have a, a an official tile, you can use any kind of paper that you, you have um, at Joann's and Michael's or any art store. Uh, you're going to find uh, sketchbooks, that have really nice paper, and you can use any of them. Uh, and they come in gray, and they come in tan and black. Uh, you can use cardstock. So I'm this is I'm going to show you how I'm going to make my heart line in the middle. So I'm because I don't want to fold one of these nice official tiles that I have. I'm tracing it onto just a piece of uh, copy paper, and then with some big scissors, I'm going to just cut it out. And you probably can't see most of this, but you know what I'm doing. Because I want to do it sort of fast so it doesn't take up too much time. And uh, usually, a lot of times when I use the circles for other patterns, I will use a compass uh, to draw circles, concentric circles, but um, when you've got a blank circle like this, you know, how do you find the exact center so you can make more circles evenly around it? So uh, this sort of helps you to do that too. So I fold this in half, and that's fairly even easy to do to line up the edges. Okay, now this is where I'm going to use it to cut out my heart shape. But if I have a circle like this, an official tile, and I want to find the center, I'll fold it in half again. So I'm basically fold it in quarters. And I have one of these that I keep on hand for whenever I want to use it. So if you line up this edge anywhere on your circle, you're lining up that outer edge, there's your center point right there. So if you're using a compass to do the rest of your circles, if you're doing something like that, um, that's where you can, you know, make a little pencil dot, and that's where you're going to put the point of your compass to draw your circles. Now, I'm not doing that right now, so I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to cheat a little bit because, now if I can find it, I like this uh, heart shape so much that I did before, that I'm going to use that to trace uh, to trace my lines. And I'm just, what I'm looking at right now is the distance from of the point to this edge of the paper and kind of the edge of the curve of the top of the heart from this edge. And I want to get those kind of, kind of even, just like that. But 
you know, if I were just drawing it freehand from scratch, I would probably be doing it a couple times to make sure it was uh, the size that I wanted. And actually, I am going to cut this a little bit smaller because I want a little bit more border around this edge. So I'm just going to cut just inside a little bit. And you're just using a piece of copy paper, so if you have to do this over a couple times, you know, it's not a big deal. Okay, so there I have my, my heart shape. And so now I'm going to line it up on my Zendella circle. And again, with my pencil, I'm going to lightly, just really lightly, trace my heart shape. You're not going to follow this exactly, but you want it light so it won't show. Okay, so there I have it. I have to guard the, <laughs> shade the, my light so you can see what I've done. Okay, now we get some of this stuff out of the way. And uh, just to let you know the pens that I'm using, I'm using uh, a white Jelly Roll marker. And I usually, I, I really like, let me get it the right way. I really like the number 10, which is nice and it makes a thicker line. But if you only have an 8, that's fine. If you only have a 5, that's fine. If you don't have any of those, that's fine too. Because you can do this pattern on the outside with your black pen as well. I would use the finest one you have. If you have one that's like an 005 rather than an 01, you might, you might try that one. The other pens I'm using are, and again, use what you have. You don't have to actually have this, these. This is a, a, actually a fabric marker, and it's got a brush tip and then a, a, a more firmer tip. And um, I use that a little bit for the shading. And actually, I use this on the white. I might not use it on this pink one. I mean, on this gray one, I'm thinking pink because then I have some uh, Jelly Roll pens. And these are, I don't know, these are oh, Moonlight ones. This is, this is a Moonlight one. And this one doesn't say Moonlight. It has a different... Symbol, oh, it's still a moonlight, but they're just three different shades of pink that I'm going to use. Uh, this one actually looks more like a red, but or no, this one looks really red on the, on the paper. If you don't have jelly roll pens and you have colored pencils, they work just fine too. And as I was digging through my supplies, I came across a couple of these calligraphy pens, which have two, uh, two different chisel tips, which are handy for filling in big spaces if you have them. Um, I'm not even sure if these work. I've had them for a long time, but I'm, I might give them a try. We'll see what happens. So the patterns that we're going to use, I'm going to show you the uh, some step outs for the outline pattern first. And because uh, they're they are different. So the one that is used on the square tile that I showed you um, the person that did it, she called it Opus, and that's what this one is, is Opus, and this is an official uh, tangle, but she did not do it two-sided like this. She more or less did a curly cue this way, and then like this one, and then this one, so she alternated the sides, not up and down both sides, and then she did an aura around each one um, that she did but going back and forth and um, let me see I have to keep checking back to the that original which I have actually lost even though I'm sitting here at the desk um, I don't think she filled in with tipple but she might have now the other one that I used on the heart is called Elegan I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, let me see if I can get the whole thing. 
in there. I can't. Well, all that's missing is the name. Let me tilt this up a little bit. There we go. Okay. And this is by uh, a website. The website is called Tangle Dream. And they don't have a step out for this, but they have a video that you can follow along. And so you can see it's a little bit like the opus that I showed you. It's also a little bit like Mooka, if you're familiar with some of the other patterns. And the thing that I have to tell myself to do as I'm doing this, um, because I've done it before and I don't make these little rounded things at the end, and it looks totally different. And if you want to do that, that's okay too. But as I come up and make this curve, I always I tell myself, okay, now make a round end as if you're doing um, poke root or mocha. And then you come back fairly slim and then it's it's almost a continuous because you want this you want these to touch if possible and you make a little bit smaller one and a little bit smaller one. So when you come to the next one, you're, you're, you don't have to follow all the way from this end. You can start along here and you kind of swoop it the other way. But otherwise you're doing it the same. You're going to come around, come down, make this kind of slim, make your second one, make your third one. As you can see, because I hand draw all of these, and so I have to repeat each section as I go. And you can see this one got little bitty, and that's okay. That's fine. Sometimes that happens. So then um, you fill in like where these points like this, where the you're going in a different direction, you fill in with a little, just a three little loops. Here, here, here. I noticed on some of some people, other people doing the same pattern, they even put those in here. If you want, you can do that too. Another way to do it is to fill in with tipple inside the the swirls. And then I saw one that was done this way with just lines. This one, if you notice, I've shaded to make it look more rounded. This one, I did that shading, but I also shaded in these valleys to give it some dimension. So those are just a couple things you can do differently to this particular pattern to make it look different. And it's really fun. I, I enjoy doing it. On, there are several videos that you can see doing this one, and a lot of times they'll do it in a very straight line like a border, which is good, and they stay right in that border. So like these touch and it's very, uh, I want to say kind of rigid. Um, I kind of like it when you, you don't worry about two lines to stay within and you can swirl it around. I use it as a great space filler because you can make these, like here, you can make these any size you want. Anyway, so that, I'm going to use the simpler, uh, let me get it back for you. Whoops, wrong direction. I'm going to use Opus uh, for this one and just give you another look at it. So this is the one that I'm going to use uh, around this pattern today. And I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to use a Jelly Roll, number 10. And I'm going to, when I do this all the time, flip it over to make sure, okay, that's the one that doesn't work. I should throw that one out. And let's see, let me get one that works. Aha, a good one. Okay, so now I have my basic heart outline and I'm. it looks upside down to you, but it's right side up to me and it's a little bit easier for me to do this. So what you're going to do, and you can start anywhere. Obviously, when I did it on the square tile, um, I started in a corner. On this one, I'm going to start at the point. And I'm not going to start right on the point. I'm just a little bit away. And so all you're going to do is do a swirl. And then she puts a little, just a little dot at the end. And then I'm going to come up 
and go the other direction and a little dot. And so I'm going all the way around this heart shape just doing these swirls, alternating. And you don't have to alternate them because I looked back on one that I did and like I'm going to do right here, it's going in the same direction. So and then the next one I'll have go in the other direction. And I'm going to turn my tile a little bit so I can work on it easier, which is something we always do. And I'm going to go that way. And then I'm going to, and they can be short, they can be long. Um, you just kind of want to make it be a, a, a nice flow around the outside edge. And what I'm going to do in just a minute after I get all the way around, and sometimes you have to go over what you did because it kind of soaks into the paper. And I'm not counting and worrying about uh, if I have the same number of swirls on one side as the other. Not anything you have to worry about. What I like to do, and I should have done it over there, but I still can, um, is make some bigger ones to kind of fill up the space. Uh, but you also don't want to lose your, your whole heart shape. Okay. And it just worked out pretty good. I don't know if you can see that, that I ended up right at, right at the end. And sometimes that doesn't work out, but you just kind of adjust. So what I did on my original box one, square one, is I came back, and in some of these places that look kind of uh, empty, I just put another little, another little uh, curly cue. And you can do that anywhere you want. It just makes it look fancier. Now this one, since I'm doing this instead of the Elegant, um, I'm not putting any little uh, the loops or anything in it. And um, that's why I say this one, this one is simpler, but it really looks neat when you're done. And you can put as many or as few of these as you want. And there's other things you can do too, which we can get into a little later. because there's a lot of things you can add to these curly cues. But the first and the most important thing is now what we're going to do is we're going to aura this design that we just did. And on my white tile, I aura, I aura'd it. That's a hard word to say on both sides. Oh, there's the one I want to look at. But on this original tile, it's only orid on one side. And I think that's what I'm going to do on this one. And to aura something, all you're going to do is outline a little bit away. And, and in this case, you, you want it, oh, I know, about an eighth of an inch away. And you're not going to worry about going into all these little nooks and crannies. I'm going to start down here where it's kind of safe and get my pen going again. And so I'm just going to go and like dip it in where it goes in. And here's a long kind of a straight line and that's okay. And you just kind of where it dips in, dip it in a little bit because this is just going to make it interesting. And just keep going around and auraing. This is this part and the next part is kind of important um, to get your spacing pretty even if you can. And if you'll notice, I'm kind of I'm going in and out over that um, pencil line that I drew, and that's perfectly fine. And if you have some scallops that you can put in there, like around these shapes, that's that's good to do. 
Each one you do will be different if you do this more than once. And that's the idea of the whole thing. And with jelly rolls, like I, I just retrace that line, and sometimes what it does is, is it picks up the ink rather than reinforcing it. So you might have to uh, go back over some areas to um, strengthen that line that you just did. Um, you do, you don't might not want to do it right away because what happens is like I say it it picks up it picks up the uh, the ink rather than um, making it uh, more prominent. So now for your next line, you're going to switch to your uh, ink pen, and I'm using a PN, which has a plastic nib, but if you have an O1, or even a, a, a thicker one, like an O, uh, what, 2, 3, you know, I wouldn't go much thicker than that, but you could. Now I'm going to aura the same line that I just did with this black pen. And again, I'm, I'm going to start at the point again, and I'm staying about an eighth of an inch away from what I just did. And sometimes, especially where I don't, I don't see anything on here that'll do it, but sometimes if you've got too many little dips close together and you can't really fit in, in, in that many, you might just end up doing one uh, curve, and that's, that works too. And like I say, someplace if it gets a little bit skinnier, in the end result, it does not matter. And it doesn't have to be one continuous pen line. See, right now I'm moving the pen a little, I mean the paper, a little bit for every one that I do. There, so now I have my black line inside. Now, before we make it look like um, a shadow box and get into the shading, I'm going to do some more with my black pen. Now, I, I'm, like I said, I just was using the, that original vi video that I saw, and uh, but I sort of made it my own as I was doing it. And um, she mentioned that she was doing Crescent Moon. And then I looked at hers and I thought, well, where was she doing Crescent Moon? I didn't see anything that looked like Crescent Moon. But, again, on the square one, this is what she was calling Crescent Moon because she drew a crescent. She filled hers in solid black. And then she did an aura a couple times. And then she left a wider band and did a, a narrower band, which adds a lot of interest. I kind of left mine, did these stripes, because I thought I liked the open, area look of it. And I transferred the same idea to the heart. So this is basically what we're calling the crescent moon area. And since you don't have really nice corners, you have two lobes up here and a, a kind of a point down here. I just, I didn't um, measure or anything, but first I did a small crescent like that, and then I'm going to aura it once and twice. Then I'm going to make a little bit wider band and aura that with a narrow band. And now I'm going to turn it to these other areas, and one crescent, a thin aura, a thin aura, leaving a little bit wider band. And the width of these bands can be anything you want. Uh, you, you want to leave a little bit in the center to do the rest of the patterns, but it can be thicker than what I'm doing here if you want and then a narrow aura. And once more over here. And a narrow aura. 
and another a narrow aura, leaving a wider band, and then doing a thin aura. Okay, so now what I did in these four crescents was I just, I divided it. And then I, I'm, I'm kind of considering that the point that everything is leading to, but not drawing it right to that point. So I'm just kind of angling these lines. So I divided it in half, and then I divided each half in half, and then I divided each of those in half. And then all I did was I kind of widened the bottom section of each one, just to give it a little bit of movement, I thought, and, and interest. It, it, this looks a whole lot more interesting than this. And I just kind of widened it to one side, to the right side. You know, if you're left-handed, you can do it to the left, to the right, to the left, doesn't matter. You can even do it to both sides. And then you're going to go around and do the same thing down here. And again, just angle it a little bit, a little bit. Divide each of those. And this gives you a chance, like this one, my line didn't quite meet this line up here. So when you come back to thicken it, it gives you a chance to meet that uh, line better. And actually, I'm, I'm kind of darkening the whole line just to give it a little bit more interest. And this last one that I left a little short. Also, this is where you can do this uh, course correction. You know, if the lines weren't too straight, you can straighten them up a little bit. And the third one. Like I say, these patterns are all very simple. The Elegon, to do that around the edge, is a little bit, it's fancier, yes, but it's a little bit more difficult. That's why I'm not doing it on this one, um, because I think it might be beyond some people's abilities so far, and I don't want to uh, discourage anybody. This one... This pattern is pretty straightforward and pretty simple, and I think anybody can do it. And we'll do we'll do another uh, video sometime just using the elegant because it's really pretty, and it it isn't that hard. It has a nice um, I want to say a flow to it once you get the pattern and the rhythm going that I really I really like to do. Now see this one that I'm doing is starting to look like I'm just thickening these lines rather than tapering them and that's doesn't matter. We say that a lot. It doesn't it just doesn't matter. It's okay. Okay, so that part is done. Now I'm going to do the rest of what I'm going to do right now with the black uh, pen, which, whichever black size pen you're using is okay. And the next pattern that we use is printa, which is basically a spiral or a spring. And if any of you have been doing this for a while, you have probably done this one. And these are, I was just noticing on my original one, I'll show you on there. Okay, this, that's printa, these little spiral circles. And I noticed after I got it all done, I don't have any along this back bottom line. And that's, that's fine. On this one that I'm doing, I'm going to make sure that I get some there as well. So what you're going to do is, um, I well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start like right here, and I'm just drawing a spiral. This is going to be kind of a big one. And then over here I'm going to draw a little one. And over here I'm going to draw another medium-sized one. Then I'm going to move over to this corner over here and draw another one, maybe a little one. You, they don't have to match. And uh, I think I'd like a little one over in this corner. And I'm gonna turn and over in this corner, same thing, sort of a big one, and a little one. 
maybe even a tinier one here. This is one of those you can keep going until you decide, oh, well, that's, that's enough. Actually, I'm going to do it, do another big one over here. And then I'm going to do a medium-sized one here. Uh, maybe fill it, fit a little tiny one there. There's It doesn't have to be any certain number anywhere. You just kind of want them scattered out. And I'm, I'm kind of trying to do them in each corner of these crescents. And then when I get this done, then I'm going to look at it and see if I want to add some more or not. And you can go out further than I have. In fact, I think I'm going to put another one right up here. Just to add a little a little interest, put another little one here. And actually, I think this needs a little one right over here. Again, this there's no rhyme or reason to any of this. You just do it until you think, oh, that looks good. Okay, now I'm going to fill in around those auras with some tipple. And tipple is nothing but orbs. And again, same, same kind of thing. You want them some different sizes. And you can even tuck them like in little nooks and crannies like this. And they don't have to fill the whole space. They can, but they don't have to. Actually, I'm going to tuck one in there because there's a hole there. And let's see. Uh, I think I, I think I'm going to have them nestled all the way around. So I'm going to come in with another one here. Maybe do a little one there. So it, it's sort to me right now. It's looking like I have bubbles all the way around the edge of this. And I'm going to start with a small one. Do a bigger one. Maybe a couple here. These you're going to, the, the print all you leave plain, but these little uh, tipples that you're doing, you're going to fill in with color. So um, that's why it's nice to kind of scatter them here and there throughout. I'm even putting a few little ones where I see these little, these little holes. Because um, the other thing you can do, and which I did, and which I can do right now, is I came back and where I have all these uh, open spaces between my crescent that I did and my tipple or the printa, I'm filling it in with black. It just gives it a little bit more drama and or emphasis and uh, they're only little Wherever usually where, when you have two circles meeting, you'll have these little triangle things. But see how that looks uh, much neater than like over here where, where there isn't any yet. So you're just going to go around and uh, fill in that edge. It also makes this these lines on the outside show up better. And like I say, they're usually pretty tiny. I'm not going into out there. This is just behind this uh, outer line where they don't quite. Well, they, they, they just automatically have this little gap. And sometimes it's not a triangle. It's like a little bar shape. And if you don't have any, that's that's fine too. This is an, a, another place too. If you're if you're really into color, where you could fill this in with another color besides black. I like the black only because, like I say, it adds some drama and some nice emphasis to what you're what you're already doing. And 
And I'm almost done. Just a couple more. I could have put another circle in there, but I didn't. Okay, now see how, how nice that... I'm turn it so it looks good to you. Nope, that looks good to me. <laughs> there, that looks good to you. See how that just that little bit of black just adds a lot to it. Okay, so the that last thing we're going to do with our black pen right now is do halibau. And if you're not, if you're very new to um, Zentangle, halibau um, is usually one of the first patterns we teach, and it's a method for drawing behind something. And you can start anywhere you want. I'm just going to start over here and draw a parallel, a straight line, and then I'm going to draw a line parallel to it. Now I'm going to cross that line, and I think I'm going to make it kind of short. I'm going to go from here. You stop when you hit that line, pick up your pin, start it on the other side, and finish it. And you always stop at the line, pick up your pen, start it on the other side. You have you could go line, 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 but you have much more continuity when you do it. Stop, pick it up, start it on the other side. I have done it both ways, and it's really interesting. It, it, it does work. So I'm going to start another one here. Go this way. I might have one go all the way across here, here, here. Now, see, you won't see anything in here, but you'll see a little bit there, and then there. I think I'll do another one over here. You can do as many or as few as you want. In this particular instance, I'm doing them kind of, I, I wouldn't say these were really fat, but you could do them skinnier or, or, or even bigger than this. I don't think bigger than this would work too well. I'm going to do another one more right over here. And that, I'm going to call that done. That's enough of those. Okay. Now, and the reason I put a lot of those in there is because now I'm going to fill in these areas with black. This sort of ties in with the black that's behind, that you did behind these things. So I guess you actually, other than the ones that are right on the halibau, um, you're going to end up putting black around the other uh, printaw and tipple that you did. But that's one reason for putting enough of the, the halibau in there so you don't have great big openings to fill in. I have just a bunch of little openings. And if you have a bigger pen than an 01, uh, if you have like an 8, an 08, I think, I can't remember if an O comes in front of it or not, um, this would be a good time to use it. And this is one nice thing about the PN pens is the pen you can press down harder and get a thicker line and so it kind of accomplishes two things at once. It's a nice filler in or if you have something else they have a, a pen called a graphic pen which is an even broader tip um, that works really well also for filling in. And actually my this PN is getting a little dry, and this is where you have to be careful, and you have to really look for those little those little spaces that need to be colored in. And sometimes I you know what <laughs> my eyesight gets the better of me and it looks like I've done a really nice smooth job of filling in and then I come back a little later like here I can see I've got a little bit of a white line there and some of these look a little scribbly and uh, you can always go back and touch that up later but we are also going to be putting graphite on top of a lot of that so you won't you won't notice it. See my this PN is getting a little bit 
dry, so it uh, sometimes I have a hard time getting a nice smooth black uh, when I fill in with it. Ooh, see how that's changing? It just makes it very dramatic. I love it. And even around, there's a little tiny space. I'm glad I did not I did not make these uh, areas bigger. Now, I made my hollow bow nice and straight lines, and not necessarily on this project, but hollow bow can be, like I said, it could be skinnier lines, uh, they could be curvy lines. I wouldn't make it too curvy. I like the contrast between the straight lines and then these circles, which are curvy. And if you made the hollow bow curvy, it might take away from that a little bit. That's just something, you know, when I do Zentangle, um, just, you know, on my own, I try to kind of balance uh, geometric, very straight lines with curvy, organic lines. Um, I try to, you know, balance it from one side to the other so I don't have all, or, all organic together and all geometric together. I kind of try to make a balance there, which is something, you know, just 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 practice. Like we like to say, or I like to say, it's just a piece of paper, and the journey is uh, more important than the destination. The other thing I w we, we were talking about on Heather's uh, program was the fact. Like, say you, you want to send this out as a valentine to people. You did it early enough to do that. You wouldn't want to sit and do this. Say you're sending out ten valentines. You wouldn't want to sit and do this ten times. Doing it once is fine. Ten times, no. But what you could do is then scan and copy this and um, then cut it out and paste it on a card. Or if you have the ability to literally copy it onto a card. Uh, I know there's places you can take it and have it printed on cards. Um, there's just ways to do it without doing the whole thing over and over and over again. Okay, now um, we're going to get out the um, colored markers. And I don't know what color I want to use. What I did on my this is my on my original one is I did th use three different colors and three different designs, and they're really I mean this is just a, a up and down zigzag line, and then just did little uh, V's to fill it, and that's what I'm going to do on this same one. So I'm working down here, and all I did was just do up and down till I got all the way across and then I came back and did another V in between each one of these If you wanted more color down here, you could actually, which I think I'm going to do, you can actually fill in. I'm filling in the littler V. This is where you could get as fancy as you want. It, uh, You know, the other thing, hearts are for any time of the year. People, there's a lot of people just love hearts. They're good. Okay. See how quick and easy that one was? Oh, now I'm going to use my different color. And this one, uh, what I'm going to do here is basically uh, flux, which is just kind of like a teardrop shape, leaf kind of shape. 
and but I'm not going to line them up. I'm going to start another one over here. It helps if the jelly roll is working. And then I'm doing I'm just doing them in like opposite directions until I fill up the the space. And then I'm doing a tipple in these open spaces. Some of them might take one tipple, some might take two. And then in the middle of these I'm doing a line and two dots just to kind of fill it in and give it a little bit more color. And that's it. And now my last color I'm going to do over here and this one is uh, Shaw Tuck and um, if you, it's, you draw a, a, a diagonal line and then go back and fill it in with more diagonal lines. And so I'm going to go this way and fill it in, this way, fill it in. Actually that one didn't quite go. If you find with the, if you're using a jelly roll and you find that you've gone over some of your black lines and it makes it disappear, you can always come back and redo those black lines if need be. There. It just, it just <laughs> it's hard to, to, to shade the light to show you the color, but there you go. So now while I've still got this pen in my hand, I'm going to start going around and filling in some of these little orbs with that same color. And I want, I want to distribute them around. I don't want them all grouped in one one spot. So I'll do a few around, put that pen down, pick up the other pen, uh, start that one. I don't necessarily want the same color next to itself, but sometimes you can't help but do that. So you don't worry about that. And it helps to fill it in totally. And if you end up like in this one area, I'm only going to have two of the colors. That doesn't that doesn't matter either. And this little guy, and maybe this one. Okay, now my third color coming back, and. I might, well, I'm going to use a different color for that one. Yeah, so I'm going to go back to the, the hot pink one. And where was that one? Right here. I'm going to fill that one in. And this one. Go to my middle color. Well, that ended up being the same color next to itself, but that's okay. Now i got to check. There's a little one here. Nobody's going to look at it and say, oh, look, she put two colors next to each other. That's not going to happen. Okay, so that part is done. Okay, now we come to the interesting part, um, which is the shading. And I'm going to need my graphite pencil for that. And um, the first one you're going to shade is this outer band that we made and uh, you always want to point the point of your pencil to where you want the darkest shading. So I'm following right along the line that I made and I'm just literally, actually I'm sort of aura-ing it. Um, 
nice and dark. But it's just a pencil width. It's not it's not real wide. And you just keep going around. And now, you know, um, if you're being a purist, and you know that we don't use erasers in Zentangle, but if I, you know, get home or whatever, I am home, but if I see that I've got a pencil line like from the outline of my heart that's still showing, I might pick up a little eraser and get that out of there. That's, you know, it's, it's fine to do that. So, just keep going around, and again, it's just a pencil width, it's not real wide, but you do, you're pointing the point towards the, where you want it darkest, which is right at the edge of this white uh, line. And now I've gone all the way around. Okay, now I need Tortion or I have some favorites that I'm looking for. I know I put it in here somewhere. That's not it. Well, okay, this is what a new Tortion looks like. And then, if you use it a lot, it might end up looking like this. And I have one that's sort of in between that. That I can't find right now. Oh, wait a minute. I found it. Okay. So this is, it's still kind of pointed, but it's kind of worn down. And sometimes when you use these enough, you uh, get enough graphite on the tip that you don't have to put graphite down. In this case, we do because we want it nice and dark. Um, these come in different sizes. These are, you can see, these are, this is a, I don't know what this is. This is a large one. The ones that we use most of the time will have an M for medium. If you don't have that, you could use a Q-tip or a cotton swab. This is a uh, makeup one, and it actually has a pointed let me get this out of the way for a minute. You see it has a rounded tip and a pointed tip, which would be really good in, in this instance. I'm going to actually I'll use it first to show you. So then you would take your pointed, whichever you're using, ex except this is kind of soft, so it's not really going to work good. I'm going to use my favorite. And I'm just going to rub each line that I did. I'm really not taking it um, all the way out. It just does it kind of on its own. It will carry it out to that edge. But you do want it darker towards the, um, the white line you drew and uh, darker towards the white line you drew and then lighter towards the black aura that you did. And I just noticed somewhere here, like right here is a good uh, case of, I don't know which one, oh, this one, where my graphite went over my white line, and you can just come back and fix it. With the, with the jelly roll pens, you really do have to wait until the, it dries before you come back again to, uh, to fix it, because it just picks up the paint. It does or the ink, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make it darker. Okay, so this is, this is kind of a little bit wider strip, so you can see better what I'm doing. I'm not, not purposely bringing it all the way out to the edge, but sometimes it carries it, and sometimes like over here where it's a little bit narrower, it just happens, and that's okay. It doesn't matter. Okay, so this is kind of what, what we've just done is the first layer. Now, now we're going to do the second layer. 
And then this layer, we're, we're doing our graphite along the black aura that we did. And now you want it really dark. And you want to come out maybe as wide as this line here. So about an eighth of an inch. And you're going to go right over what you already drew and what you already colored. It's not going to, it's not going to go real dark over where you colored with a jelly roll, and that's okay. You'll still see the pattern underneath. But you're going to follow that black line, and like I say, come out about an eighth of an inch. Down in the corners, and like up here, you, you can come out even further to kind of round it. Um, this is where you really want to press down hard, and again, the point of your uh, pencil should be pointing at the edge that you want the darkest. This, one, this pencil really could use to be sharpened a little bit, um, but it's working fine. And we have, we have more shading to do in just a minute. We'll get this done first. Okay. You can see the dimension in that already. So now I'm going to take my tortillon. And I just used little circular motions. And you, you want to get up close to that line, and you want to bring it in towards the middle a little bit. And you're, you're, you're softening that, that hard edge that you just did. See how nice and soft that looks compared to, like, over here where it's still harsh? And you'll feel it'll, it'll feel a little different over where you have the jelly roll. It kind of, uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's a little bit bumpier. But, you know, it, that's just the way it feels. There. Now you can see the dimension already. Now, there's a couple things. Well, there's a, a, one other thing we have to uh, shade. But you could... If you wanted, you could shade like along these the crescents. Um, I did not do that, but we do have to shade our hollow bow. So the hollow bow, you're going to shade a little bit wherever it goes over or under another uh, design. And actually, you can even shade right like because you want it to look like it's going underneath these designs. So you might put a little graphite there. And this is going to be like totally graphite because it's behind everything. Same way with this one. There, there's no way you can do that one uh, just a little. Because what you want, you want some white left in the middle when you can. Um, but like I say, it doesn't always work that way. But you do need that so you have that look of like it's woven in and out. And I'm just, I'm basically I'm doing a pencil line. Not, not real wide. But you'll see what a difference it makes. Okay, I got, forgot one on this side. Okay, I'm back with my tortillon. And again, you just want to, whoops, see, I forgot one here. And wherever you've used the um, graphite, I would suggest uh, using a tortillon or your fingers or a tissue to soften it. Because it, besides spreading it around a little bit, um, it takes away the scribbly look. Because you can't help but have a scribbly look when you're using the pencil. But it, but it does take away from that. Ooh, see what it's doing? It's like magic. And I'm trying to leave just even a little bit of white on some of those smaller ones. 
Sometimes, so oh, here's another place I forgot. That I could have just carried over some more of the graphite from this edge, but I didn't. But this is where you might have enough graphite on your tortillon to take care of it. Okay, so there the middle is done. Now, there's a couple other uh, finishing touches. Um, I did not uh, individually shade the, pr the printa, the springs, which, you know, you could do that if you wanted. You could bring a little bit more of the graphite around these shapes. And like I say, I'm just using the graphite that's on my tortillon and just bringing it um, just at those bands to give them a little bit more of a rounded look. The other thing we're going to do is, um, and I flip this over to make sure my jelly roll is working. And this is just to add added interest. I'm going to put little dots in this band and basically I'm just touching the jelly roll pen down and it just adds, um, like I said, it just adds some more interest to the whole design. And then I have one more one more trick to show you which um, it's, it's, it's kind of specialized, so you might not have it, but um, I can show you a couple different different ways to finish this. Because you can see, this outer border now is not doing much of anything. Um, it, it shows up on the gray. And like I say, if you're doing it on white, um, you would be using a black pen, and it would show up, it would show up um, actually better. I kind of like the delicate look of the white on the gray, but there's we also have available a set of gray jelly roll pens which are a lot of fun to use. And which I that's another alternative to the the one I'm gonna show you. And this was just um, when I did this it was I don't want to say it was sort of by accident. Um, and I'll explain it once I get all these little dots done. See, doesn't that add a lot? I'm amazed. I'm amazed myself how much ad that adds to the the finished product. It's just amazing sometimes how one little touch um, adds a lot. Because you could do this like in these bands too. You could add dots. Um, to make it more interesting. There's just so much more you could do. I just, you know, showed you the simplest, uh, I'm like saying, I basically took the designs from what um, uh, the original person did and went with that. But you could do anything you wanted in the middle. The basic thing is this auraing and the shading to get the, the dimension. So I'm di just have another pen which is a I think this is a moonlight I'm not sure it has a where is it on the the thing see it has like a shooting star it might have been called starlight I'm not sure but it's actually like a clear sparkle pen and just to show you see how it, it's not really silver Although you know what, this might be a this is a silver sparkle pen. That's why it showed up so good. Okay, if you have a silver sparkle pen, this is what I did to this one. And there's another technique which is called zenbossing, which is they use white and gray jelly roll pens to uh, make it look like it's embossed. And all I did with this pen was, let me see where I started, I just kind of emphasized the inside curve of these, of my curly cues. And sometimes I, you know, I varied how far I went. And actually, like I say, this, this is a silver one. Let me see if I can find... Uh, 
I'm checking the numbers. Let me try this one. Although I like the way that looks. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, can you see the difference? This is the clear... Let me see if I can... <laughs> you can see the difference. Uh, it just right. So it, it looks kind of gray but uh, or silvery, but it's mainly clear and sparkles. But I'm going to keep going around with this silver one. And actually you could, like on some of these, you could bring it down further. And I just thought of another. I'm basically doing it inside the curly cues. but it adds a whole lot to the finished uh, tile. And I'm not sure which one is giving you the best idea. There you can see, sort of see over here where I've already done this. Sometimes I get too much light, sometimes it's not enough light. I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going around with this silver one. Um, I like the little bit of sparkle. Uh, if you had just like the plain gray Jelly Roll pens, that would be, you could do that, use that as well. And just kind of, it just adds a little something to it. And I'm going to do something else besides... Sometimes it's hard to know when to stop on these things. It's just so much fun. Okay. Can you can <laughs> I know what I did before. I put a piece of paper up here, I think. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, I will hope I will uh turn off one of these lights to give you a better idea of it in, in just a minute. So now I could, um, once I figure out which is the, which is the just sparkle one. Okay, this is the spark, just the sparkle one. Um, cause I like to add sparkle and I, I'm just adding it. It doesn't add any color on the gray tile. It, it, it darkens it a little bit, not as much as that silver one I just used. But I'm just adding a little sparkle in those lines. I think I'm going to do it in both lines. And you don't have to fill it in all the way. It, it doesn't show up a whole lot. If you're giving this to somebody in person, they will see it. But it's not going to show up on the, um, on the video. It just, it just doesn't do that. The glitter usually does not show up. But the other thing that you could do with the white pen on these sparkles is, uh, which I like to do a lot of times, is add some uh, dots around these little curly cues. And I like, a lot of times I like to do them in the V's. And uh, this I'm doing on the outside of the curly cue, not on the inside. And it's not any certain number and you don't have to go any certain distance. Um, you just, just here and there to add a little bit more interest to it. And it just makes it look kind of lacier. The other thing you could do, which I think I might do right here, is you could add uh, either um, a zinger, which I'll show you how to do, or just a fescue strand, which is a fescue strand would just be to do kind of a swirl with a little a little dot on the end, um, which I'm going to put a couple places so that I keep it kind of even. And uh, a zinger, which I can add right over here, is uh, a curved line and then I, it's just three or four little
three or four little lines there. You can see it. It's right there. And that's a fun one to do. And it's fun to do in the white pen um, on the gray. And it just it makes the this border that I'm doing, um, it helps fill it in and it just makes it look fancier. And the trick, like I say, is to just be sure and do it kind of around, uh, going around so it's kind of, you have several here and there. Like I have one, two, three, and that's probably enough. So I'm going to turn off one of these lights and see if that that helps. Oh, it, it helps somewhat. All right, let me turn it this way. And I'm calling that done. And I'm going to shade it so you can see the finished product. So you can see the depth that we got. We have It looks like three layers, but it's not. It's only one layer of paper. Oh, and the, the other thing you usually do, which I will do with my white pen, is, uh, and this one is obvious which direction you're supposed to see it, is put your initials or your chop. This is my chop, if you can see it. It's barely visible. And sign it and date it on the back. So, trying to get a good look on that. Okay, that is it. I hope you'll try it. My other thoughts was you could do the same thing for St. Patrick's Day using a shamrock shape and green shades of green. You could do it for Easter using an Easter egg shape and uh, filling it with bands of different uh, Zentangles and just using, you know, all kinds of pastel colors. Um, if I have time, I might even do a videos uh, based on those. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you try it and uh, we'll see you again some other time.